and we're husband and wife. So what could go wrong? <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best shows that elicit discomfort, unease, or feature challenging themes. <coughs> Number 10. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. In 2019, comedians Tim Robinson and Zach Cannon found their place on Netflix, where their unique brand of comedy can flourish in I Think You Should Leave. But when you try and jump in, they yell at you and they say, You're not part of the Turbo team! Don't run! You don't run with us! We're the ones who run! The sketch comedy show takes social faux pas to unnatural and often absurd extremes, reveling in the discomfort created by its characters. Hey, Meredith, I'm worried that the baby thinks people can't change. Shane, can we stop talking about it? Because I've worked really, really hard to change. Ask Mark. Premises for the series' sketches can range from inappropriate computer games to demonic doggy door intruders, making it hard to guess just what kind of strange setup you'll be met with next. What have they done to us? What did they do to us? Thankfully, each short episode has as much to laugh about as it does to cringe at. Oh, you please put! Now you have to marry your mother-in-law. Yeah, because he landed it and you flinched. You have to marry your mother-in-law. I did not flinch. Number nine, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. If you ever encounter someone dismissing a show that has aired on the CW solely because of its network, you might want to tell them to give Crazy Ex-Girlfriend a try. For almost 30 years, I've known something was wrong, but mom said weakness causes bloating, so I tried to be strong. The clever comedy series is a refreshing departure from the channel's typical lineup, featuring mature conversations about sexuality, womanhood, and mental health in a fun musical format. Cause I'm about to get a dying of course, as revolutionary as it can be, some of its sensitive subject matter can get a little bit uncomfortable, especially when it's expressed in a song. From troublesome infections to healthy reproductive cells, nothing is off limits. Got the quantity and the quality, no IUD is stopping me. And while most of these unconventional songs are worthy of playing on repeat, others are a bit harder to stomach, even for fans. Cause I love my daughter, but not in a creepy way. Number eight. Tim and Eric awesome show great job. Imagine falling asleep to an airing of chowder, only to be awoken by the panicked, desperate screams of grown men. <laughs> this could have easily been the reality for kids and adults alike from 2007 to 2010, when Tim and Eric awesome show great job ran on Adult Swim, Cartoon Network's late night programming block. Miss, the answer to your question is she's not in. You had me come up four flights of steps because the elevator's out. The satirical comedy often parodies the kinds of shows and infomercials seen on public access television, giving them an unsettlingly surreal spin. In some cases, the sketches even start out fairly normal before slowly descending into disconcerting darkness. Look at this discount price. There's no meat on it. You throw it back. Stay in the water. I'm not going to serve you to my family. That's a setup that seems tailor-made to throw off even the most impenetrable nighttime channel surfers. If that was their intention, well, great job. Spaghetti. In the quest for the golden treasure. Number seven, Euphoria. This teen drama has its fair share of comedic moments, but they aren't what makes us cringe. Oh my God, do I look like I'm in Oklahoma? Why would your play be set in Oklahoma? Instead, it's the series' frank depiction of sexuality, violence, and substance use that has many viewers watching through their fingers. I'm sorry, but I need you to tell me where they are. I need you to tell me where the pills are, Mom. I need you to tell me what the suitcase is. Sure, broaching serious topics in a high school setting is nothing new. Degrassi did it for decades, but Euphoria dials the intensity up to 11. Open the door! I can't do it. Open the door! Sorry. Open the door! Open the door! This choice to depict such serious subject matter in a graphic way has drawn criticism from a number of media advocacy and drug education groups, but the controversy has never diminished its popularity with younger generations. Uncomfortable or not, its harrowing performances and unique visual flair make it must-see television. You said that memories exist outside of time and have no beginning or end. Number six, the rehearsal. Although Nathan Fielder's career in comedy started prior to 2013, his Comedy Central series, Nathan For You, made him a name to watch. Playing an awkward, offbeat version of himself, Fielder suggested eccentric marketing ideas to real life business owners and let them play out to their natural and occasionally uncomfortable end. I was scared. What do you mean you were scared? Yeah, sometimes you're scared for, for something. You what are you know, talking sudden, about? 
accident or something. About five years after the show's finale, Fielder upped the ante with the rehearsal. I mean, how would, as a woman, how would you take that if you touched a guy's hand and you just left it there? She could read that as you flirting back. Right. What begins as a strange social experiment in which Nathan helps prepare for big events takes an uneasy turn when a kid is added to the picture. Oh, hi. Hi, I'm here to see the doctor. I, Dr. Farge, can I have a seat? Indeed. His attempts to help a woman rehearse parenting spiral out of control until he realizes he's become something of a surrogate father to a real-life child actor. Yikes. You're gonna say bye? Bye, I don't wanna leave you. It's okay. It's okay. We'll see each other soon. Number five, Arrested Development. The year was 2003, and Arrested Development introduced audiences to TV's wildest formerly rich family. Our lives have not quite been the same since. They are gonna keep dad in prison at least until this gets all sorted out. Also, the attorney said that they're gonna have to put a halt in the company's expense account. <gasps> right out of the gate, the pilot ushers in one of the series' most consistent cringe-inducing plot lines, George Michael's crush on his cousin, maybe. Yes, it's as disconcerting as it sounds. I'm, I'm tempted to kiss again <laughs> so we can teach him a lesson. Well, why would that teach them a lesson? No, I mean, uh, to, to freak them out. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense. But isn't that what makes it funny? <laughs> Believe it or not, that weird relationship is just one of many uncomfortable parts of the show's five-season run. Hey, look at that. We didn't get swallowed up into hell. <laughs> Whether it's Maybe's accidental teenage love affair, Tobias's brief experimentation with hair plugs, or something else, Arrested Development is the master of making fans wince before they laugh. Is that a second? Oh my god! Dad, are you all right? I fooled his own son. I am a leading man. Number four. Big Mouth. Purity is an uncomfortable time for everyone, but it seems to hit the characters of Big Mouth harder than most. Luckily, they have hormone monsters to help them get through it. Knock, knock, who's there? It's the hormone monster. <laughs> no, 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 you gotta be kidding me. The show's in-your-face depiction of some of the most unpleasant and awkward parts of adolescence, paired with its ugly, cute art style, are not for the faint of heart. Even your hormone monster thinks you've gone too far. But if you can handle the cringe, Big Mouth is one of the most surprisingly sincere and all-encompassing depictions of being a teen ever made. Mom, I'm sorry. You were right. Really? Wow, what am I right about? I do need help. Well, if you ignore the monsters and anthropomorphic pillows, that is. This might be my only chance to have a baby. I mean, I am 40. What? I'm from your grandparents' house. Number three, The Eric Andre Show. Whether you're aware of it or not, You've probably seen a clip or still from the Eric Andre show in your lifetime. Never said that. Why did you say, why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? In spite of, or maybe because of, its strange sense of humor, the series has inspired numerous memes that have stood the test of time online. There's, of course, the Who Killed Hannibal image. We also can't forget the one of Andre desperately trying to enter the DNC. Uh, let me in. Let me in. Both are fun bits, but they don't begin to touch the sheer levels of off-putting absurdity the sketch comedy series itself reaches in an average episode. It's a talk show that messes with its guests as much as its audience, getting some extreme reactions out of a surprising number of stars in the process. She's a great guest. I like her. Number 2. Pen15. What's more awkward than being 13? How about watching two women in their 30s act out their embarrassing adolescence alongside actual teenagers? Hey, Maya, come over here. Yeah, come over here. Oh, my God. Come with me, come with me. I can't. No, no, no. They come didn't say me. me. They okay, only said right, you. Okay. You got it. This is the premise of Pen15, a bizarre coming-of-age tale starring actresses Maya Erskine and Anna Conkle. Throughout the show, the women act out first periods, first kisses, and even first... Stolen thongs. Um, why? It's hilariously relatable in a way that you wish wasn't relatable, and frequently inspires some of the strongest cases of secondhand embarrassment one can get from a TV show. But as you know, something of Heather's was stolen a thong. Please call it underwear, Mom. Set in 2000, it also makes sure to riff on some very millennial specific sources of cringe, like AIM's scream names and the screeching sounds of dial up. Oh my god! <laughs> Good job. I got mine. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Kung on Earth. Philomena Kunk asked the questions no other investigative reporter would dare to. Which was more culturally significant, the Renaissance or single ladies by Beyonce? Hannibal. 
cannibalism stuff is pretty unsettling. You intend me to be my own last supper? Yes. The White Lotus. Do the stomach turning surprises cause extra at this hotel? Someone broke in and took a dump. Yes, send someone. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Some of Danny DeVito's best work also happens to be his most uncomfortable. I just wanna be pure. The Office. David Brent makes Michael Scott look like a normal boss. Last year I took a year out and I went traveling, um, exploring. Exploring yourself. And Asia. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, The Curse. Following the success of Nathan For You and the rehearsal, off-kilter comedian Nathan Fielder created The Curse with Uncut Gems co-director Benny Safdie. It's a match made in discomfort heaven. You can't just sit here and say, this is the show or this isn't the show. You can't do that, all right? There's a reason there isn't a network executive hounding over us Relax, the Relax, Daddy, okay? The dark comedy series satirizes reality television through its HGTV star protagonists, Whitney and Asher Siegel, who are attempting to bring sustainable homes to the community of Española, New Mexico. The beauty of a passive home is it actually functions like a thermos. So it's never going below 66 degrees in the winter or above 78 degrees in the summer. Whitney is a pathological altruist, constantly attempting to ameliorate things in increasingly cringy ways, while Asher becomes obsessed with a curse he believes was placed on him. I curse you. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna go get changed, okay? The relationship and lives slowly deteriorate, and it culminates in one of the most inexplicable finales we've ever seen on TV. Watching this has us wondering what exactly we've gotten ourselves into, but we can't deny we're entertained. Grab a snack, we'll be right back, guys. Thank you so much. Which of these TV shows made you the most uncomfortable? Let us know in the comments. Sky, rockets and lights. Hang on, maybe. Afternoon delights. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.